Now we will have a quick look in tank viewer this time at the armor, but don't expect to bounce many shots in this thing. At best, you have 35mm of armor from the front, but that actually applies only to the lower plates and one flat strip under the gun. The rest is just as forgettable from the front as the sides and rear that are only 14mm thick, if you can call that thick in the first place. For most enemies, especially with derp guns, you will be a one-shot, forget kinda experience, and your 165 HP won't stop anyone either. Looking a bit on the bright side, you are at least relatively maneuverable with 40 km per hour top speed and a quite good 38 degrees per second hull traverse. View range is also average at 310 meters and signal range is quite good at 550 meters. Equipment wise, your options are rather limited here as well, so I suggest to pick up a camo net and binos. I did also use a gun laying drive because I'm really picky when it comes to aiming times, but you might be fine without it if the basic 2.5 seconds are fine with you. Regarding crew skills, camo, camo, and camo. Not getting spotted is priority number one in this machine. So, the verdict. Not like. And probably didn't like me either, to be honest. It's not terrible, but there are so many much better machines in the lower tiers that it was just not worth the effort for me. It lives and dies by not getting spotted, so play it very carefully from behind cover and with friends around you. If you manage to do this, you can get some serious damage done with using your great alpha damage, and that's something I hope to give you a taste of during the upcoming replay. Alright, so here we are in Ensk in Armada 2. It's a tier 3 match, so we are top tier, and looking at the team lineup it's, well, it's the usual micro tier Ensk madness that we can expect, looking at all these, all these red guys. I mean, the teams look fairly balanced, so... Let's see what we can get out of this. So as we are starting from north, oh, and one of our PT7s just turned blue. Idiot, probably. Did shoot the the ground and hit somebody. Ah, oh, honestly. Anyway, so um, I'm coming here to the one line as I spawn near it and see if I can get some shots into enemies advancing in this region. If you come here, always have a look out. The, on the falling trees, which could mean enemy tank destroyers positioning themselves just at the other end of the road. And first kill, cruiser 3. Somebody softened him up a little bit for us, so we could one-shot him. It's not a bad start, but hopefully we will have something more to shoot at very soon. Looking at the map, quite surprisingly, it's not a lot of the enemy has been spotted until now. A couple of guys here and there, but... Okay, now they start to appear, so it seems they are they did not rush the city, as they usually... Oh, there they are. Okay, so we have to come back and relocate. We have to support the cap, as it seems that the enemy is making a push along the railway lines, and probably on the, um, the hilly landscape on the other side of the map. So, camping here in the back won't do us any good. And our other BT-7 is AFK as well, because why not? Alright, so so far our guys did quite a good job at defending the cap. But that doesn't mean we can't farm some more kills while they are engaged. So, the enemy is engaged, being engaged from the cap side. So I decide to go here, as it seems that the enemy is not really covering this road, and I will try to get some cheeky shots in from the corner of this building. You have to be careful, because there are shots coming in from my colleagues from towards the cap, so you really have to avoid just rolling into their line of fire. Oh, there is medium too, and that was a good shot. Again. Not quite enough to kill the guy, but we did a lot of damage. Okay, it seems the Marder 2 and... Yeah, the Panzer 1C 